Hi everyone, so I promised I would film this um, little video about um, some research I've been doing about um, triclosan. So I thought uh, it would be good to sort of uh, just give some, get some information out there and um, uh, just talk a little bit about why you know I, I don't use uh, antibacterial hand soaps anymore. So just a couple things I, I sort of thought you know was interesting it's kind of a timely topic I've seen it sort of talked about in magazines and mentioned in a couple um, videos now so I thought you know it'd be, be kind of nice to, to do this video um, and I wanted to give you guys a little bit of, of um, information on sort of what my background is so you know where I'm coming from um, I have uh, a master's in biomedical and tissue engineering um, I did work in um, clinical trials sort of uh, in oncology uh, cancer research um, so that's sort of my background uh, right now I, I do want to point out you know I am not um, you know a toxicologist I am not a microbiologist and I'm not an environmental scientist but the reason I want to tell you what my background was is because I feel like my background has allowed me to learn how to uh, critically read research papers and um, sort of understand all sides of the story and I thought that's something sort of important to bring to this discussion about about triclosan um, especially since probably not all of you want to wade through the scientific literature um, and they do use a lot of you know jargon um, in terms that you know not everyone is going to understand but hopefully what I've been able to do is to read those papers and sort of put down what I feel are sort of the most important points. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of all the studies um, that have been done. Um, there's a fantastic 63 page review paper um, that I went through that, you know, was really interesting. And I think, um, uh, you know, it was very balanced and I think it, it is important to sort of talk about uh, all sides of it. Um, so I did want to sort of touch on three main areas uh, that were sort of the reasons why I don't use antibacterial uh, uh, personal products anymore. So that, you know, includes hand soaps, dish soaps, and the toothpaste. Um, so those those areas I sort of want to touch a little bit on are, um, you know, possible health effects, uh, environmental impact and bacterial resistance. So I'll start with health effects and this is probably the one that is um, you know one of the most controversial areas of discussion and to tell you the truth I have to say that you know there are some studies that show health effects and some studies that show that it's safe and um, you know it, it you could really uh, interpret the data either way. Um, the FDA has cleared it as a, a safe product, but I do want to mention, though, that the FDA and Health Canada, just because of, um, you know, things that are research that's coming to light now, that they are undergoing another review of it. Um, but, you know, in the review that I, I read, that they did establish um, some safe exposure limits uh, that they felt for, for adults and children, and they felt that, you know, um, we probably wouldn't get exposed to that amount of of the chemical in you know in our uh, lifetime uh, so you know some of the studies have shown if you're asking what sort of health effects that you know they're, they're sort of talking about they're talking about ones that you know have some animal studies have shown uh, that in some cases there's some disruption to um, you know people to, sorry not people to their endocrine system which is what governs your your hormones um, and to some muscle contraction um, uh, you know effects to, to muscle um, muscle effectiveness I guess you could say but these are you know animal studies and then there have been some studies in humans that show that you know there's no effect on uh, you know people's thyroids which is you know your thyroid is the center of, of one of the centers of where you know hormones are regulated um, so, you know, I did mention that, that they've established these, these safe limits, that they feel are safe limits, but what, um, I do sort of want to point out from that, though, is that, uh, triclosan seems to be finding its way into more and more household products. Um, it go goes under a lot of different trade names. The one that I'm most familiar with is Microban. Um, you know, Microban, you can find it in some towels, you know, they claim that these towels are, uh, especially dish towels, you know, are, are 
um, you know, antibacterial. It's worked its way into fabric, so like things like mattresses and things like that, you know, when uh, especially things that need to be shipped a long distance. Um, you know, they, they do have that antibacterial component so that they aren't, you know, bacteria infested by the time you get them. So I'm not saying that, you know, triclosan itself is, is all bad. I'm going to tell you there's lots of great uses for it. Um, but the one in particular that I, I you know, will just, I, I feel is maybe a little not as useful as the one is the antibacterial soaps. And there's, there's more reasons for why, you know, I don't think we should keep using it. And we'll sort of discuss those a little bit later. Um, I also sort of think I just wanted to point out for anyone, you know, I've got uh, a new baby. Um, for any of you nursing moms out there, uh, I do want to make you guys aware that um, something that's sort of concerning is that triclosan is showing up in mother's breast milk. Um, and there was a study done that showed that um, there's a higher amount of triclosan in breast milk in mothers who use um, personal care products, as in soaps, toothpaste, that contain triclosan. To be completely fair, um, the way they crunched the numbers showed that it wasn't a statistically significant difference in terms of um, you know, triclosan levels, but the authors did say that they found this finding a bit concerning because it was consistently higher. They basically concluded that, you know, more research is needed and we need to examine more mothers in order to get a bigger um, sample population so we know, uh, you know, we know better if this if it was just a fluke or um, this really is a thing. But they were saying they were concerned because consistently the mothers who were using products with triclosan seemed to, sh to have higher levels of triclosan in their breast milk, which they were then, you know, feeding to their babies. Um, so speaking along the lines of, um, you know, parents, so to parents out there, if you were concerned about, um, BPA, also known as bisphenol A, um, being in your children's plastic wear, I would say that you might want to be concerned about the use of triclosan, um, you know, in, in, on your child, I guess. Um, it's not really as much of an uproar because um, there are no antibacterial products that are specifically marketed to children where there are, you know, like baby bottles and things like that that are specifically for kids, um, you know, that there were some health effects, possible health effects that were cited uh, and because it was concerning for children, you know, it was, it was banned. Um, you know, moms got concerned they had BPA banned from bottles and plastic wear. I sat down with a friend of mine who is a polymer chemist. We went through the BPA literature and just like the triclosan literature, there's some literature that says there are harmful effects. There's also an equal amount of literature that says that there there aren't. Um, so I guess what they did was they erred on the side of caution and they had BPA removed. So in that same vein, I would say to parents that, you know, it doesn't hurt you to be cautious with your children. Um, so, you know, if you were concerned about BPA, I, I would be also concerned about triclos. The other, the other aspect I wanted to look at was environmental effects. So, um, chlorine is a, a compound that um, most urban wastewater treatment plants use to clean up the water so that, you know, we, it's safe for drinking. Um, unfortunately for us, the chlorine actually does react with triclosan uh, to form a compound that, when it becomes exposed to sunlight, creates dioxins. So what are dioxins? Dioxins are a chemical that are extremely, can be extremely toxic, um, and these dioxins are actually known endocrine disruptors, so they're known to mess up hormone balances. Um, dioxins persist in the environment for a long time, um, and they can bioaccumulate to dangerous levels. So why should this concern us? Well, I mean, there's chlorine in our, in our tap water. So, you know, we are exposing ourselves potentially to some, some dioxins, you know, on a regular basis. Um, you know, probably not so much because you're probably not washing your hands out in full sunlight. Um, but, you know, this also means that from an environmental perspective, um, 
you know that wastewater it does wash out into the lakes and things like that so uh you know we are essentially affecting our um uh you know aquatic ecosystems around us and uh you know the the plants and animals that live uh in those areas will take up the dioxin and become affected by it um the other thing that is sort of concerning is that triclosan um it inhibits photosynthesis in algae. So photosynthesis, I, as you may or may not know, it's the process in which you know green plants take uh, sunlight and carbon dioxide to build nutrients for themselves and release oxygen into the atmosphere. So why do we care about um, algae not photosynthesizing? Well, you may not know this, but um, algae is actually responsible for most of the photosynthesis uh, on the planet Earth, because if you think about it, we've got a lot of a lot of water and a little bit of land, right? So a, a lot of the algae out there, you know, if there's if triclosan sort of continues to uh, make it out into our environment, it is going to inhibit the algae from performing photosynthesis, which could be a problem for us, you know, really down down the road. But you know, why do we want to? Why would you want to go that route, right? The last one, which is sort of a topic that I, I, you know, working in a hospital is sort of quite important to me, is the issue of bacterial resistance. Um, so I read up about the, the way triclosan um, inhibits bacteria, or, or what is it about triclosan that makes it antibacterial? And it's kind of complicated, and I don't really want to explain it, but just suffice to say that um, the way triclosan acts on bacteria um, makes it possible for bacteria to become resistant to it in the same way that you know use of antibiotics if you don't use it properly um, you know you can get you can we are developing bacteria that's resistant to antibiotics now so in the same vein we are now seeing there are documented cases of um, you know E. coli that is uh, resistant to triclosan so E. coli as you might have heard in the news is often meat recalls and things that have been in the news often due to E. coli. Um, but to avoid avoid getting you know promoting triclosan uh, resistant bacteria is because I want triclosan to work when it's needed. So um, hospitals in hospitals it's an effective method of um, combating superbug outbreaks that happen inside hospitals so um, you know they will wash linens patients in a fairly high concentration of um, of triclosan which is sometimes you know uh, 10 to you know like 100 times stronger than what you would see in a, in a hand soap so right now this is an effective way to combat you know superbugs but if we continue to um, use antibacterial hand soaps because they're in such a low concentration it's like not taking your antibiotics properly right so you could develop bacteria that is resistant to um to the triclosan and uh, that takes away another tool the hospitals currently have to fight um you know the superbugs and uh you know one really cool uh use for triclosan i think is they've started they're able to infuse sutures, so stitches, with uh, with triclosan. So if you can imagine, this is really useful because um, you know a surgical patient gets sutured up with these antibacterial sutures, and so that wound site then is now not going to get infected, which is great. I think it's a great way to use triclosan. But you know, let's save triclosan for the uses that we need it in, and not waste it, um, you know, needlessly. Okay, so. So, what can we do, um, you know, to help things? I think the biggest thing is, is just, uh, you know, stop using those antibacterial hand soaps, uh, dish soaps, and toothpastes. Um, studies have shown that good hand washing with regular old soap uh, is just as effective as using antibacterial hand soap. So you, so you will get just as much bacteria off your hands, um, you know, with just plain old soap. Um... I do want to point out, again, to be fair, um, studies have shown, though, that, uh, you know, the use of triclosan in uh, toothpaste does, uh, you know, does provide sort of a significant uh, improvement 
um, you know, in um, in oral bacteria and sort of uh, killing gingivitis causing bacteria. Um, so, you know, I'm just putting it out there. Personally, I don't want to use um, the triclosan in a toothpaste because it's something that, you know, I'm, I'm really ingesting. Um, but, you know, if, if, uh, if you have problems with, with gingivitis, um, you know, that it, that is effective, that is an effective, um, of thing to use. So I don't want to say, you know, don't use it. But, um, the big one really for me is, is the soaps because it's been proven that it's not any better than regular soap. So why would you want the added, you know, the added chemical? I don't know. Um, you know, use alcohol hand sanitizers. Okay. Those do not contribute to antibacterial resistance. Um, you know, so feel free to use those. Um, if you guys want me to do another video just sort of explaining how is it that, you know, triclosan kills bacteria as opposed to alcohol and why is it that one produces antibacterial resistance and one doesn't, um, or, you know, how is it that soap, you know, even, I don't know if everybody knows how soap works. Um, so, you know, if you guys want me to do another little video about that, then, you know, just let me know in the comments. But, um, but yeah, so alcohol is hand sanitizers. Like if you go to a hospital, you'll see they don't use antibacterial soaps. Um, they use regular soaps in the washrooms and they have those alcohol hand sanitizers everywhere because hospitals more than anywhere else are really, really concerned about um, antibiotic resistant bacteria uh, showing up, you know, in patient wards because they, they need to make sure that, uh, you know, every tool that's available to them to fight infection works and works well. Um, so lastly, you know, I know a lot of you guys love the Bath and Body Works soap, and the thing, the truth is, I do too. But we love it for the scent. How many of you guys actually love it because of the antibacterialness? Probably, probably not. So, you know, if if you want them to change, you know, how they do things, if if you want to be able to buy regular, regular, you know, Bath and Body Works soap, and I don't know why they don't make a regular version, um, you know, but they don't. Um, you know, just ask them, tell them each time you go, just say, hey, do you guys make it a, a regular version? And then what really matters is basically, you know, vote with your dollars. So if they don't make it, don't, you know, if they don't make the product that you want, don't buy from them. Money talks, right? So if, if uh, you know, my channel doesn't really have very many subscribers, but if I could just get... You know, some of you guys, just to spread the word, if you guys see this video and, uh, you know, you think it's, you know, a good idea, just spread the word, let your subscri your subscribers know that, you know, that you support, um, you know, the use of regular soap as opposed to antibacterial soap, and just to see if we can mobilize enough people to stop buying from Bath, Bath and Body Works enough for them to, uh, to stop making it. Let's not wait for the FDA and Health Canada to f conclude their investigations, which, you know, really can can be you know decades long uh, as they you know look at population health effects and you know I don't blame them for that because they want to know that you know the long-term effects but you know let's let's try to make a difference a difference now so um, you know uh, again just vote with your dollars and let them know that uh, if enough people stop buying their product they are going to change how they do things um, so I think um, yeah, I think that's sort of, a, you know, uh, according to my notes, that's sort of all I wanted to cover. If there was any questions that you guys had, in, I've uh, listed in the in the information box, you know, the two papers, the two review papers that I, I looked at. Um, I have to say, unfortunately, they're not all sort of available to the general public. You have to go to, to the journal, uh, to the journal's website and, you know, buy the, the journal. Um, or if you are... Um, you know, an academic, or if you are in university that has, you know, an electronic library that you can access, you can download these papers as well. Um, you know, I'm not going to distribute it for free because I'm, I'm not allowed to do that. I, I acquired these papers through, you know, legal means, and so for me to just distribute it freely, that's not, I'm not allowed to do that. Um, but, you know, if you guys are interested, I'll, I'll put the citations below. You guys can look up the papers yourself. Um, yeah, so if you've got any other questions, feel free to ask them in the, in the comments, and I'll do my best to, to answer them. Let me know if you guys, you know, again, as I said before, if you guys want another video on, like, you know, like how the alcohol hand sanitizers work, as opposed to the antibacterial soaps, um, I could maybe do that for you guys another time. Okay, hope you guys are all doing well, and um, talk to you guys soon. Bye!